tell me a little bit about how all you Reynolds got involved in the music business. Coincidence, I think. <laughs> you know, we, uh, I think we all had a background in music. We all played in bands and, you know, uh, none of us except for Dan were probably good enough to, uh, to actually perform for a living. Uh, Robert started out as an entertainment attorney, my oldest brother, and <clears throat> eventually ended up managing the killers. He still practices law as well. I had not planned to go into music. Uh, I practiced litigation at a firm in L.A., a couple of firms in L.A. for a while um, before I started managing Imagine Dragons and um, kind of fell into it. And from there, you know, I just I loved and I still practice law, um, but I also manage another band called Paper Out, and uh, I guess that's the story of it. And Dan has been writing music for years and years and years, and and uh, Dan is the lead singer of Imagine Dragons, and um, so uh, yeah, that's the story. I guess we have there's more there's more siblings who are not in the music industry. We just happen to be the ones that are. I read an interesting story where they quoted uh, Dan, the singer of Imagine Dragons, was talking about uh, the single, It's Time, and that he'd written it in, and I'll quote, at a transitional period in my life, I was trying to decide what I wanted to do with my life, trying to figure out how seriously to take music. Um, lots of folks here on the site are trying to figure out that very same thing. Um, how did your brother get through that, and what kind of led him to make the jump and, and try to take music as not just a passion but a career? Well, you know, uh, yeah, I'll quote from, uh, from Wayne, the guitarist, who also quotes it probably from somebody else, but he often said, you know, you don't do music unless you have to do music. You know, it's not an easy profession to make money in. Uh, it's, you know, your odds are probably better at being an NBA star. And, uh, but I think in the case of Dan, for example, he took a hard look at himself and realized that this is what he was meant to do. You know, whether he would make money at it, maybe he wouldn't make money at it, maybe he'd be poor the rest of his life. I think he came to the conclusion that this is what he was born to do. This is what he wanted to do. Um, and you know, you gotta be, you gotta be good. You know, if you're going to succeed, the, uh, it's one of the few, industries where people are working for free all around you and that's what you're competing against you know not many people are coming over and asking if they can plumb your toilet for free but a lot of people are you know playing music and so it's tough but um yeah it was, that song was definitely a meaningful one to him it was written you know during a very difficult time but um i think that you know like you said it was a transition period and i think he was able to see enough um enough of a reaction to his music to keep him going and you know, make him feel like there could be some kind of future. Uh, it's interesting to hear you use that those words. They have to do it because it's been my experience. I've been wor working with musicians uh, for the better part of my adult life, and that's what it always comes down to. They'll look you in the eye and say, "Dude, I just have to do this." 